In this video, I'm going to show you how to make super quick ink bleed effects in Photoshop. So grab your laptop, open Photoshop, and let's go. So we're here in Photoshop 2021, and you can use previous versions of this too. Uh, we're going to get started and make ourselves a document. So we're going to go to our new document here. We're going to choose a preset, doesn't matter what size or shape. Uh, and then we're going to add a name this uh, texture effect okay so we have our artboard set up the first thing that we're going to do is get our background set up now when you look at uh, vintage images or vintage paper effects that kind of thing online you'll see that a lot of them are yellowed or slightly off-white so we're going to replicate that we're just going to create an off-white background now you can use any texture or color with this it doesn't really matter but for the sake of this video we're going to use an off-white color so we're going to set up ourselves a new layer here and go to our color picker and we're going to choose we're going to start with pure white and then work our way into something more off white so i'm going to go to yellow and i'm going to bring the saturation down slight uh, up slightly and that looks pretty good so then we're going to go to the ellipses here uh, choose the paint bucket tool and then just paint that in that may just be a little bit too yellow so i'm just going to peg that back slightly so having an off-white background just helps these effects shine through a little bit more. If it was on a plain white background, sometimes our effects can get a little bit lost. So now we're going to add some text to this image. So this is entirely up to you how you do this, what style it is, what font you guys use. This is your design, so make it however you want to. I'm just going to create something super simple here. So I'm going to use a font called Foldnik, which is really cool. Just found it a couple of weeks ago. I'm really liking it at the moment. So we'll do something like that. And then we'll add another text layer down here. I would recommend when you're doing, um, using this style of design, is try and mixing up the thickness of your fonts. It just helps this effect really sell when you've got a slightly thinner font that shows the effects more. Um, let's do this. Okay, so we have our text in place. Like I said, this is your design, so you do this however you want to. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is just add some extra effects onto the text, uh, mainly adding a stroke. Uh, if we have a stroke, we'll really see clearly the, the, the ink bleed effect. So I'm gonna go and add, I'm gonna change the color of the, the hello here. Uh, we're just gonna make that like a sort of a blue like that. Maybe just take some of the saturation down. And then I'm going to add a stroke to that. So to add a stroke to a, to a piece of text, what you can do is go to the layer down here, double click on the layer, it brings up the layer style options, then go to stroke. And then you can choose the thickness of the stroke, the color of the stroke. I'll we'll probably go for something like that. And you'll notice here the color is slightly off black. And that's because when, when we're trying to replicate print, uh, the color is never black it's slightly purpley or slightly reddish uh, just the way the inks are mixed so we're just going to use that similar color that's just going to help it really stand out and what i'll do is i'll take that same black and apply it to the text below as well okay so we have our text here and this is the part where it all starts to come together so we're going to start to add our filters now so the next step is to add our background and our text layers and merge them together so if you go down to the layer panel if you select both the background and the text layer, right click and convert to smart object. So now that's been converted to one individual layer. But what you can do is if you want to change anything within that layer, you just double click on the thumbnail here and that opens back up the editor. So you can edit anything inside that if you need to. So now that this is one layer, what we're going to do is start to apply our effects to it. So the first effect we're going to apply is called minimum. So if you go up to filter, down to other, click on minimum here. And so you see what, what it's done is it's thickened up the edges, but it's also rounded them off slightly. So it kind of feels like a slightly overinflated, slightly smudged and slightly pushed out on the edges. And that just re helps to replicate that kind of, if you drew on a piece of paper with a marker, the edges start to kind of thicken up. So that's what that's done here. So I usually go somewhere around the three and a half pixels in radius 
and we want to preserve roundness. So click OK. So that's thickened things up. That's helpful. So the next filter we're going to add is called spatter and it's in the filter gallery. So if you go up to filter, filter gallery, and then we're going to zoom out just to see the image. And then if you go to brush strokes, spatter. So now what you'll start to see is the edges look really rough and it looks like it's kind of been printed in a really bad way. So you can adjust the spray radius, which kind of makes it more jaggedy, or you can also increase the smoothness, which just helps to iron out some of those bumps. So I like to have it kind of like a spray radius five and smoothness at six. Depending on the size of your artboard, the smaller it is, the smaller those numbers will need to be because a spray radius of five when the artboard is much smaller will just be really jaggedy. So just keep an eye on that. What I'm doing here may not work for your specific artboard. So just play around with it and get the effect that you want. So once we've done that, click OK. And so now you can see that we've got that jaggedy effect. And then the next thing we're going to do is add a blur filter. So we're going to go down to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And what this does is it just removes some of the sharpness you get from digital designs. Uh, it just helps us to sell the effect more. So something like radius 1.2 will do. That's just helped us just to remove some of that sharpness. And then finally, what we're going to do is add a noise filter. And what the noise filter does is it just creates a bit more of a rustic effect. It creates inconsistencies and just helps again to sell that effect. So instead of adding the noise filter directly to this smart object, what we're going to do is add it as a new layer. So you click the new layer button down here, go to your color picker, and then we're going to add a plain black screen. And then go back to our paint bucket tool. And we're just going to I'll make sure we're on that new layer and we're just going to chuck that paint bucket on. So now we have a plain black screen. The next step is to add the noise filter. So if we go to filter, noise, and then add noise. And you can see that we've now got this kind of grainy noisiness. Um, so I, I'm going to probably keep it around 40%. So now that we've done that, we want to put the noise over the graphic. So what we're going to do is go to blend modes, which is down here. Click on normal and we're going to change that to linear dodge add. And what that does is it just starts to show this noise come through. You can see that the background color has been slightly lost. We've lost that off white color uh, through this filter. And so the reason why we've put it on a new layer is so that we can actually reduce the opacity of that specific filter. So we're going to come up, we're going to click on the layer. We're going to go to opacity and we'll change that to about 30%. So you can now see we've got that off-white color back, but you can also see that we've got those inconsistencies in the grain and the noise here. So that's really helpful and that just helps to sell that effect. And so there you have it. That is how you do a super quick ink bleed and roughen effect in Photoshop. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like. It really does go a long way to helping this channel. And also, if you make a design using this tutorial, make sure you tag me on Instagram at designbyruben. Consider subscribing for more videos like this to come and I'll see you again soon.